What's up everyone, Matt again with the Maya Learning Channel, and today I'm going to try something a little different. Instead of concentrating on a particular workflow, I'm going to do my first list. And what better topic than my top 10 hotkeys in Maya? For this list, I'm going to try and balance the most powerful keys with those that you'll use most frequently. And just to shake it up a bit from other lists you might have seen, I'm going to focus specifically on hotkey combinations that let you do some very powerful things very quickly. So without further ado, let's jump right into number one. Many of you might already know about Maya's snapping feature up here in the status line. These let me snap movements to grid lines, curves and edges, and points respectively. What you might not know is that you can quickly activate these same snapping modes by middle dragging while holding the X, C, or V keys. With such quick access, snapping becomes a lot more useful for precise object transforms, especially when combined with pivot mode. For example, watch how fast I can change an A pose to a T pose to match this skeleton. First, I'll select the arm's vertices, then press D to enter pivot mode. I'll V middle drag to snap the pivot to the shoulder joint, and finally turn on symmetry. Now look how easily I rotate the arms. Or another great use for this is to roughly place new objects. So suppose I create a new area light in the scene like so. Rather than zooming all the way out, selecting the light and moving it up with the handles, I can just see middle drag to roughly place it at head level. From there, I can just finesse the light like usual. As you might imagine, this trick can save a lot of time in even denser scenes. So if you ever found yourself working in a really dense scene that makes it difficult to select the object you want? Well, you can use the Isolate Select hotkey to quickly hide everything else in the viewport, except the object you're currently working on. I can even isolate specific parts of this robot's body to work on them individually. To bring the scene back, just deselect everything and press Shift-I again. You can even isolate multiple selections at once. This is also handy if you want to increase performance while working on specific objects, since the rest of the scene won't bog down the viewport. There are all sorts of ways you can speed up component selection in the viewport. For example, did you know that the F9 to F12 keys quickly swap between component modes? That's a lot faster than using the buttons up in the status line or even the marking menu. Double clicking a component in face or vertex mode will select all its connected components. while doing the same thing in Edge or UV mode, we'll select Edge Loops or UV Shells. One place I use this a ton is actually in the UV Editor, where it makes selecting overlapping shells so much easier. To take things a step further, you can also use this method to select component loops as well. For example, if I select this face and then shift double click the one next to it, 
Maya selects the entire loop. Or I can select a start face and shift double click an end face on the same loop and Maya selects all the faces in between. This works for edges and vertices too. One thing this is really handy for is cutting new UV seams. Another handy trick is using shift comma or shift period to shrink and grow your selections. So for instance, say I wanted to expand these lips. I can double click in edge mode to select them. Then hit shift period repeatedly to spread the selection to adjacent edges. Then I can hit B to activate soft select and blend the changes with the rest of the face. It's also pretty handy for getting a selection started in tight, awkward to click areas, like these nostrils. I can just select one vertex in each, then grow them outward. After which, I can control click individual vertices, or tab drag to refine the selection. So you probably already know that holding the right mouse button produces a contextual marking menu based on what you're hovering over. What you might not know is that the menu changes if you hold certain other keys with it. In fact, both Control and Shift will modify the right-click marking menu, giving you different options based on what you have selected. One of my favorite uses for this is selecting just the top faces of a cylinder or sphere. I can't use the shift double click method here because these faces aren't quads. See, I can only select all the faces or none of them. So instead, I can just select the center vertex and use the control right click marking menu to convert that to faces. See, easy. Or watch how fast I can select a bunch of vertices, then shift right click to merge them all to the center. So similar to number four on this list, you might already know that Q, W, E, and R will quickly cycle through the select, move, rotate, and scale tools. However, what you might not know is that holding these keys, along with the left mouse button, will get you a shortcut to their tool settings, too. This is a great way to get at frequently changed settings like axis orientation. A couple of the options in this shortcut menu even have shortcuts themselves. Take soft select, for example. Earlier I demonstrated turning it on with the B key. But you can also quick resize the falloff region by holding B while dragging the mouse. Left dragging starts the circle at its current value, while middle dragging always starts the circle from zero. This also applies to sculpt brushes too. In addition to growing or shrinking the region with B, I can also hold M to increase or decrease the strength.
But getting back to the toolbox, you can hold J while transforming to quickly toggle step snapping. This is a little different from the snapping I showed you earlier. Instead of snapping to grids, curves, and points, this snaps to specific intervals that you define in the tool settings. The default value of 15 is particularly useful since it leads to 30, 45, and 90. Finally, you can shift drag any manipulator in component mode to quickly extrude faces or edges. This comes in real handy when modeling. Bonus fact, shift dragging in object mode gives you quick duplicates instead. Here's a sweet little tidbit. In addition to the big arrows that transform along one axis, the move and scale tools also have these plane handles that transform in two. Another way to activate these is to control drag any of the big arrows, which locks that axis and moves or scales in the other two. Sometimes it's just easier to grab these than the little plane handles. However, if you still find them too small, a few taps of the plus or minus button can easily fix that. To make things even easier, you can actually middle drag anywhere in the viewport to move along the most recent axis. Very useful if your object's handles are off screen. This one's a tad obscure, but you know how you can use Control Z or just Z and Control Y to undo and redo actions? Well, it might surprise you to know that the square brackets will undo and redo camera moves too. This comes in handy when you're testing out render angles or even just move the camera accidentally. Also, did you know that you can change the size of the undo queue in the preferences? If you're tired of running out of undoable actions, just crank this baby to infinite and undo to your heart's content. Now let's get a little into the animation side of things. When you just start animating a Maya, one of the most common hotkeys to learn is S to set a key on the selected object. The problem is, is that this sets a key on all the channels at once, whether you use them or not. This often has a cumulative effect that makes animating more and more difficult down the line. That's why it's better to use Shift W, Shift E, or Shift R to set keys on specific channels instead. Now my unused channels are left free and clear. There's a bunch of hotkeys I can use for the time slider too, like Alt-V to play and stop, or comma and period to step one frame at a time, or if I hold K instead, I can jump between keyframes. Finally, holding K and dragging the mouse lets you scrub the time slider from anywhere in the viewport while K middle dragging lets you scrub without activating any keyframes along the way. Time for another obscure one. Did you know that Control P brings up the color picker? I use this a lot to grab colors outside the viewport that I might want to use later. As you can see, the sample stays in the swatch.
Finally, here's a great one for you VFX artists out there. Suppose you're trying to closely align a 3D effect to some live action footage. You want to be able to get in close to see what you're doing, but every time you do, it messes up the tracking with your backplate footage. Well, by pressing backslash, I can activate the 2D pan zoom feature, which keeps the scene and plate at sync. Then I can hold backslash while middle or right dragging to move the whole scene view while keeping it synchronized at the same time. Here, check out the difference in this two pane view, one with 2D pan zoom mode turned on and the other with it off. This setup makes it easy to do things like align a ground plane. And then if I set the plane to holdout mode, I can lose the shading but keep the shadows. This is also handy for animators who commonly tweak the overscan to fit a resolution gate in the viewport. With this, you don't need to anymore. And that's it for my first top 10 list. Don't forget, everything I've shown you is based on Maya's default hotkeys. You can always customize them to your liking up here in the hotkey editor. Beyond that, did you find this useful? Did I miss any of your favorites? Feel free to chime in in the comments section below. If this format proves popular, I'll try to do more like it in the future.